Let me try to um, close us off and collect our thoughts with five brief things to take away. As, as people who have heard the words of Jesus, we need to understand some things. Number one, God wants everyone at the party. Okay? Everyone is invited. Now, Jesus, he not only said this, but he, he lived it. He was an embodiment of it. All the so-called sinners and the so-called saints, they were all gathering around Jesus. I mean, just read the Bible, and you're always going to find Jesus. You see him at a feast. You see him at a special meal. You see him going to a banquet. And, and he's all the time, he's, he's enacting what he's preaching. God is having a party, and all y'all are invited, or however the Southerners say it. I don't know. Everyone. Everyone, everyone, including the self-indulgent and the self-righteous. You're all lost, and God is seeking each and every one that in Jesus they might be found. Everyone's undeserving. Everyone has manipulated the Father for their own gain in one way or another. And yet, the invitation still stands. Everyone is invited. <laughs> Number two, no one gets to cancel another. Oh, we're good. we'd love to cancel today. That's what we do. Especially, especially those self-righteous jerks. They, their, their prejudice and their ignorance. You know, we see that, and then well, we just respond in kind with our own self-righteousness and and canceling them, congratulating ourselves that we're not like those people. Like if Jesus told this story according to our kind of values of today, well, then it would end with the younger brother inside with the father, and then they would lock the door to the, to the older son sulking outside because he's too slow to get with the program, that arrogant, ignorant jerk. But then... What would the meaning of the party be in the first place? I mean, the whole reason we're having the party is to celebrate the return of an arrogant, ignorant jerk. <laughs> no, no, no. In Jesus' story, the father leaves the party. Again, sacrificing his honor, just as he did when he hiked up his robe and chased after to meet the younger son. Okay, Sacrificing his honor, again, this time to go out and, and plead with his pouting older son. Okay, So, so what, what's the younger? Is, is the younger son inside? Is he pouting as a result of the father going to do that? If the older son comes inside, is the younger one going to reject him? Would those of us who've received grace be so stingy in dispensing it? Now, look, this, this doesn't mean that we don't set boundaries, that there are, that there are no uh, consequences for wrongdoing. We'll talk about that some other time. This is just to say we've got to note that the character of the community around Jesus is different. It's different from the world's practice of actively seeking to create enemies, harden myself against them to the point that I'm committed to pursue their demise in order to validate myself. All right, we're different than that. Number three, don't call an outsider someone who God has invited inside. Right? Now, the more you hang around Jesus, the more it's kind of Hard to figure out, like, who, who's an insider and who's an outsider, because Jesus is always flipping that around and, and confounding it. He's redefining it based upon himself. There's no other standard. He's redefining it based on himself. And, and that's just a good reminder for us to not be so concerned all the time with who's, who's in, who's out. Okay? I mean, that, that's Jesus' concern. Okay? Is it a concern for you that Jesus invites those you consider outsiders to the party? That, that's the whole reason for the celebration. When an outsider comes to their senses and returns to the Father, apparently there's rejoicing in heaven. And Jesus came, after all, to bring heaven to earth. And he's inviting us to live in it. Number four, own your stuff. This is what I say to my kids all the time when they're so busy pointing the finger at, at what everybody else is doing wrong. Right? So uh, here's the thing. Jesus' followers... Uh, are people who recognize that the sin that infects the rest of the world infects us as well. Okay? The older brother couldn't see that the evil that was expressed in the younger son 
also lived in him. And so the story ends with him in a standoff with his father. But look, as we are eager to rid the world of evil as we should be, well, let us be most zealous to allow Jesus to purge the evil from us. And then, then we might actually be a compelling witness to the rest of the world. We might be a vehicle through which the spirit of Jesus can defeat evil and redeem and make the world new as only he can own your stuff. Let, let Jesus deal with all the tax collectors and sinners and self-righteous sticks. Okay, he can handle them. And finally, number five, we got to party like the Father. And this whole series of stories that Jesus tells, it's, it's designed to uh, create, to bring into being a new kind of community. A whole new kind that the world has never seen. It doesn't follow the world's rules. This is a new kind of community where supposed insiders and outsiders are all invited and all united around Christ, resulting in this uncommon joy and hospitality and welcome and repentance and forgiveness and, and love that is, is so uh, head-turning. It's like uh, I love what Carrie said about their family's commitment to invite their father to come and live with them. And she said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to love him to the point that he says to himself, what is wrong with you people? (laughs) Jesus, he's putting pressure on us. It might be a good pressure, but he's putting pressure on all of us to ask ourselves if we want to be part of a community like that. And we might say yes. It might sound like a great relief to us, and I hope it does. Okay, It, it, It didn't sound that way to the older brother right away. But when we, when we come in and we are welcomed and we're embraced and we're brought to a place at the table, I hope we also know that the father, the ultimate party planner, is still outside pleading with others to come in. We got to be ready to party for others. We got to be ready to celebrate and welcome. And when we do this thing that we're doing, I mean, some of us are doing it online, but when we do this thing and we gather, I mean, it's a party every weekend. At Easter, of course, we celebrate Jesus is alive. We do it every Sunday. Jesus is alive. Let's have a party. When we do this thing, we should expect that that people who, you know, the world would paint as outsiders, they would say that, well, they don't belong because they don't match up to certain uh, standards and so forth. We should expect that those people would show up when we gather here. Our dinner tables, our lunch dates, our barbecues can be reflections of heaven when we extend an uncommon invitation. And the same is true. We can be a reflection of heaven when we forgive when we seek to understand instead of to cancel, when we are generous to undeserving people. Those are the hallmarks of a community that makes Jesus their Lord. And to anyone who thinks that they might want to be a part of it, Jesus says, welcome home.